Well, good morning everyone. This is Elsie Normington here from Merkins Community Centre and here we are again with another Monday morning message. It's now week 20 of our closure and today I've come out to visit Liz and Richard Syred. So, good morning folks. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lovely to see you this morning. So, uh, first of all, I would like to just ask you both, um, what, what brought you first to the community centre? Okay. Well, for me, um, I think I've been to the community centre in different guises. So the first time I came to the community centre was when um, you and I worked together and we used to run um, training and life coaching for, you, for women and we hired the uh, room at Merkinch and used that as our venue and we did that several times. So that was the first um, encounter with Merkinch Community <laughs> Centre, shall we say. And then after that, um, I joined um, Singing for Pleasure. Um, I think it was back about 2014, sometime around about then. Um, it might have been earlier than that, but roughly about then. And um, and so part of the choir, so I was there in that guise. Um, and then I've been involved in other courses that I've done there, and um, partly with work with Connected Carers. We used to hire that and we used that as a venue. Um, but also then um, I've been on the ballet class um, and different things like that. So I've, I've been there for different reasons, right. um, which has been good. So that's lovely. That's three different things. So there's training and meetings and then you've been at the ballet class yeah. and you've also been at singing for pleasure. So um, has it been meaningful for you to come along to the community centre, Liz? Oh, yeah, it's been good. I mean, I think it was always um, a great place to do the training because the venue is such a, a good venue. Um, and when you've been to other places that like we've been to, you can believe how wonderful Merkinch Community Centre was in terms of what was available. Um, but also that the people that run it and look after you there when you come in, and um, you know, the caretaker, I always remember Ian, he was so helpful and things like that. So that made it all so much easier to do, which made it a joy to be there. Um, in terms of being long into the classes and that, again, it was good because the tutors that I've come across have been very good facilities have been good and it's been interesting I mean I wouldn't have thought in 60 I was doing ballet <laughs> so that's good um, and being part of the singing group again you make friendships and, and connections like that which again I think is, is such a nice place to do it so yeah so that's great well thank you Liz and Richard you're sitting there beside Liz what brings you to the community centre well, then? I, I don't remember what how I went there first but I do remember that I went there when you were running, well, you organised the running of a course for computers. And there was a group of us, um, of, for various pe people's ability to make things, do photocopy, uh, photo editing and things like that on the computer. And it was brilliant. We really, really enjoyed it. And I know that from my point of view, uh, from then on, I think I was hooked to Merkinch <laughs> because it had a purpose. It was obviously um, uh, of, of value and it's something I've never forgotten and I love it. And then, just like Liz said, we, we joined Singing for Pleasure. <laughs> and they actually thought we could sing. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can sing. <laughs> so, you know, so from then on, there was no turning back. And then, and then of course, because your centre uses so many facilities, we, we were part of a church that were there at the time. And so, so we had the church there, we had the... the, the, the uh, ICT stuff that was going on, there was the singing, there was a lot of reasons for drawing back and drawing back. And then when it was, uh, there was a, a period of time where they were talking about closing the Merkin Community Centre, and nice. it was the way that people just rose up and if, as if to say, don't you dare, don't you <laughs> dare touch us, whatever. And I, I, I think it's just been, it's been a brilliant, brilliant I think place. what really uh, impressed us in that sense was how the community came together you know, like there's other community centres that well, I know I've been at in all different guises, but it's the it's the connection um, of people and how they they come together for things that are important to them. Yes. Um, so even as if you like, we don't live in the near the community centre necessarily, but and yet you can see that people that do value it, and mm -hmm. it's nice to be part of that. So it's lovely to just reminisce and, and just hear your perceptions about the community centre. So overall, how would you just describe the community centre, what it's meant to you then, just in maybe one or two short sentences? <laughs> For me, I, I'd say it's, it's, it's a lifeline. It definitely is a lifeline because it is so central to so many people's lives. So many people are involved in it. I think there's a lady that's running the, 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 the Merck Inter Community Centre who's in her 80s now. 
and she's been there for years and years. And, it, and I think that is the hallmark. It's, it's a sense of identity, a sense of purpose, and anybody can come in and join it. It's not a case yes. of you can, uh -huh. you, 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 you've got to be here at least 50 years and then you can say you've, you've been yeah. there. But it doesn't matter what age you are, it doesn't matter how long you've been going there or not going there, you You're just welcome. fit in, you're yes. welcome. Everybody's welcome. That's right. Yes. Yeah. That's so. lovely, Richard. Mm -hmm. And what would you say, Liz? I'd, I'd agree, confirm what you've said, really, and also the fact that it's like you you feel that you're accepted um, and included in things. Because um, I think sometimes you can feel, especially in small communities, if you like, if you're, you're an outsider, especially if you're English. No. <laughs> oh, but, you're so welcome. But, you know, it's, uh, it's like you, you don't feel that at all. Um, I think when, you know, you, I, I remember like when we've been there, when we were doing that, the training, like, the ladies that did the uh, food and, the, and all of that, they were just couldn't help you enough. Yes. And it's yes. the willingness of people, the helpfulness of that, and just the fact of feeling that you belong. That's yeah. lovely. Belonging is crucial because we all need to belong in yeah. life, isn't that right? Mm -hmm. So that's lovely. So here we are, as I say, on week 20 of our closure. We don't know when we'll be opening yet, but I would like to know how uh, you've managed to get through the lockdown so far and if you've got any tips that you would like to tell all our other Merkins friends. <laughs> okay, do you want to go first? No, you go. Okay. Um, well, I think at first it was such a strange, I, mean, I think we've all said it's such a strange time, isn't it? And at first I kept thinking, well, I've got to plan my day, I've got to have everything organised, I've got to have my lists and all that kind of thing. <laughs> and then you suddenly realise that actually, do you know, you've got tomorrow and it's going to be the same as today. So the list doesn't need to be done today. And I think yes. it was adapting to that. And I think once... I could adapted to the fact that it was okay not to get everything done in a day. Mm -hmm. I actually started to enjoy the time of being at home. Um, I mean, I did go walking really, really early, like six o'clock in the morning when the weather was lovely in the woods just near where we live. Um, and I never saw anybody and I could go out with my headphones on and just walk and come back. And that set me up for the day. Um, I did have a plan in the sense of I would make sure that I did certain things that I wanted to get done so that I had things that I'd, I'd, I could say I've achieved, because I think that's important. Um, but then I would, I, if you like, allow myself time to sit down. So I think, right, in the afternoon, I sit in my summer house and I do some of my jigsaw, um, because it was okay to do that. Okay. Um, so it's things like that. Um, because of my lunch club, I would ring as many of my lunch club, over the fortnight, uh, every fortnight I'd ring so many of them every day, whatever. So again, I, f I built that into my time so I could sit and have a chat with people, FaceTime, friends. Um, and we spent a lot of time together, didn't we? We spent a lot of time. Like for me, I've, I've got into, I've never been one to have hobbies. I've not been that sort of person. I've always been too many other things to do. But I've really, really enjoyed the pair of us. Most afternoons, we make cards. And we, so for example, we've sent in, in this lot time, we've sent, sent out over 85 cards to people just because we've made them, because we enjoy making them, and and, 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 and thinking about somebody else. You know, it's, yeah. it's been really, really good. Yeah. And do you think it's a good thing to think about others during this time Absolutely. and not just think of yourself? Yeah, that's very much the case, because people, when when, when you're in a situation of any sort of problems with any health issues or anything else like that, it's very easy to become very inward-looking. Uh -huh. and doing something where you're thinking I'm making this for somebody else and you're thinking about that person that way and, and then e e even in your mind as the days go by you think oh they have got my put my card today yes. and it's, it's been really really interesting as, as, as I think it's been fair to say it's, it's not an experience I would want to go through again I've you know I've locked down you mean yes. yeah, the lockdown has been challenging and to be honest there have been some days I think that this day is so boring <laughs> but Having said that, once you realise it's the way it is, there's nothing we can do about it, and you just get on with it. And I'm it's acceptance. Yeah. Okay, so what what would you say then to those that are watching today? What would you say to them since we're we're not out the lockdown yet? Mm. Although it is easing, uh, things are not back to normal. We're living in a new normal at the moment. What one thing would you tell people that are watching today? So I think it is about communication, but also thinking about others um, and it might just be sent in a card it might be a phone call it might just be a text you know whatever or you see somebody across the road and you wave to them you know it doesn't have to be big things but it's the little things that make the difference mm. uh -huh. 
So that's lovely. So your two key things are about communication and showing that kindness to other Mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. Uh Well, thank you very much to you both for talking to me today. We really appreciate it. We're glad that you come to the centre and we hope that it won't be too long until the centre opens its doors again. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.